I cut out the queen cells and added more frames. A few days later, they swarmed anyway. Buzz. A quick note, the background noise today was awful. I had an active construction site on one side of the building and Air Force pilots practicing maneuvers above me and behind me. And of course the wind was blowing. It got a little better as the video progressed, so I eventually went with the original audio. Thanks for bearing with me. Two weeks ago, this colony was getting ready to swarm. I found a lot of queen cells and some of them were already capped. That means the queen and half of the population were only days or maybe hours from flying away to establish a new colony somewhere else. When I see this, I prefer to move the queen and some young bees into a different box. The new space and smaller population makes them think they already swarmed. They settle into their new home and start raising brood to build up their population before winter. The bees in the original hive think the swarm left them behind and they carry on waiting for their new queen to emerge, mate, and begin laying eggs. In the meantime, they continue foraging for nectar that will eventually become this year's honey crop. So all I had to do was find one queen bee in a hive that had 30 or 40,000 other bees. Usually that's not a problem. The distinctive long abdomen on an actively laying queen makes her fairly easy to spot, even on a crowded frame. But queens that big and heavy are poor flyers. In the week or so before swarming, they stop laying eggs. Their abdomen gets smaller as their reproductive organs shrink, and they lose as much as 30% of their body weight. That makes them look a lot more like the other bees, which makes them much harder to find. Marking queens with a bright color on their thorax makes it easier to find them. But you probably know where this is going by now. The queen wasn't marked, and despite looking for her for an hour, I could not find her. So I did something I don't like to do. I cut out the queen cells and added more frames. My hope was that the extra space would make them feel less crowded and change their minds about swarming. Nope. A few days later, they swarmed anyway, even though they did not have any queen cells left to produce the next queen. We call this state hopelessly queenless. No queen and no young larvae that they can turn into queens by feeding them royal jelly. Well, I made this problem by cutting out those queen cells, and now I had to fix it. In this case, that meant combining them with another colony that had an actively laying queen. I usually do this by putting a screened divider board between the colonies. The screen prevents them from fighting with each other, but makes it easy for them to sense and smell each other. After four to six days of sharing pheromones, they begin to think of themselves as a single colony, so I can just remove the divider board. Before the swarm, this colony filled three full boxes. Afterwards, they only filled one and a half boxes. I decided to shake all of them into the bottom box. This would make them feel a bit crowded, but the tight quarters would put most of them directly below the screen, which would maximize the pheromone sharing. Our snail grow board. Now this uh, has openings on all four sides, but it's they're closed. The bees in the bottom that don't have a queen, they're hopelessly queenless, will smell the, uh, the brood from the other hive. And uh, after three or four days, they'll be married up, I'll come back and just remove this. But I'm going to give this uh, bottom hive an opening on the side. Uh, so, sorry, the top hive will have an opening on the side. The bottom hive has an opening in the front, the same opening they're familiar with. So, the camera won't see this, but I don't remember how heavy this top five is. We're gonna find out. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, just bring them right over here. Now, they now are in a new location. 
so what's going to happen? Well, some of the bees in this hive are going to fly out this new entrance down here, and they're oriented to this other spot. So that's fine. So what I'm going to do is take this hive, which is a queen right split I made two days ago. So there's a queen in there. And we are going to, and um, we are going to give them this spot. Any of the field bees that fly away from that other colony are going to fly back to this spot. And, whoops, I have to face it the right direction. They're gonna fly back here, and they're gonna come in here and help this colony get reestablished. So that is fine, because this colony, it's a small split. You'll see all these orienting bees will go in there, and they'll be accepted. They'll smell that queen that's laying, and they'll be fine. These guys, We'll crawl right in there. We'll kind of watch them a little bit. Now you can see they're just going right in there. Okay, so we accomplished two things. We are gonna combine the queenless hive with a, with a queenless laying. And uh, in three or four days, there'll be one hive. It's still early enough that I'm gonna get some honey from them, especially since I already have some honey from them. Um, in that one box. So uh, they'll be able to finish it. And we also boosted this queen right split. Uh, so they'll have a bigger population of bees and they'll grow faster. Uh, they'll have no problem growing enough to uh, make it through the winter. All right.